Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which begins today with the presenter being accused of lying through his teeth on a regular basis. Unfair, but true. It is known as perjury, and therefore legally punishable by a lengthy prison sentence, which I hope that Coyle gets. I was thinking about you in my bed last night. Oh, I wish you wouldn't do that. It makes <laughs> me I... uncomfortable. It makes Janet, it makes Janet <laughs> sick. Go on ahead. She doesn't like that, can it? No, I was thinking... I was thinking yesterday about yesterday's story that you told. Oh, I see. And I said to myself... You didn't pick enough holes in it. What we should do is we should compile a top ten of your lies. Now, this would be the worst... Well, that's very strong. This this will be your worst lies. You see? And I thought that the story you told yesterday would would get into the top ten. I can't even remember the story I I told yesterday. And there's one lie... There's one lie that I would love to investigate, but I can't. It's almost, you know, the only person who may be able to help me is Wendy Austin. <laughs> it's the only person who may be able to help me. Well, as I don't know what you're talking about, I find it difficult to comment. Well, you know? your worst lies. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. The lie that you told yesterday. Hold on a second. Just let me preface this before you go any further. Yes. When you say a lie, you mean that you think it's a lie. It's not a bona fide lie. Correct. A proven lie. It's what Cor- you think is a lie. Correct. I would like you to make that clear. Yes. That you think it's a lie. But yes. I am not, I am saying that it's true. Yes. Okay. That's so a- don't refer to it as a lie. No. Uh, look, to refer to it as a probable or a possible lie. Right. Okay. Yes. In future. Right. My, my people will be talking to your people about that. There is a legal point here. Go ahead. But if I say something that uh, you claim allegedly happened, does that cover it? Well, I, no, I, I claim that things happen. Yes. You say what allegedly. Did I say? You say allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yes, that's what yeah, I mean. Because you yeah. don't believe me. No. But I don't have to say allegedly because I'm no, telling the truth. No, that's what I'm saying. Me. Me. I say allegedly. Okay, well, you be careful what you say. You're on the air. Yes. People sue me. And I can <laughs> sue you. There's rancor on the show today. The presenter and interrupters seem bent on making each other's Christmas as miserable as possible. Accusations and counter-accusations flow backwards and forwards. Where is the Christian spirit? You're falling down in your job because uh, here's an interview opportunity that you didn't alert me about. And I happened to find this on the internet the other day. A gentleman writes, offering us interviews about the DVD release of Come Dine With Me, Extra (laughs) Spicy. Right, And to tie him in with the release, we have the opportunity of interviewing the following ex-celebrity guests. And they want us to tick which ones we want. Do you want to hear them? Right. Paul Ross, brother of Jonathan. John. Christopher Biggins. <laughs> Carlton Palmer. Peter Stringfellow. Goldie. And Neil Ruddock. Send it up to Alan Simpson right away. Oh, that's unfair. It is unfair, but I'm an unfair, unfair. person. Unfair? You talk about unfair? Yeah. When you sit there and call the presenter a liar? I didn't presenter. call you a liar. Oh, you did? No. Uh, Janet? I didn't. Janet? I don't, I don't did he call me a liar? I, I do believe he did. Oh, the lies that you tell? Yes. Oh, so a lies, if I tell lies, that means I'm, what's the word? I'm a liar. Anyway, not to worry. I have to say the fainting chicken story had me laughing the other night. Gentleman talking about our little men. You don't like them either. And also when the little Jerry, what's wrong with you? You don't like anything. And when Jerry... Puppet put his head down on the table. There was a Bobby Charlton comb over exposed. Is this true? Or is it the pupper, puppet master having a laugh at your expense? Well, it is true. There is a bit of a comb over. On my little man in our cartoons, uh, my head is depicted the way it is. Anyway. Included below, after hearing the story today, at the end of the show about a friend of yours, Annie McCartney, who finds a way of escaping a £30 fee for too large hand luggage. She hammered off the, the handle. And he wants me to tell Michael O'Leary's Christmas fairy tale story. That's the one about Ryanair. Arriving in a hotel in Dublin, Michael O'Leary goes into a bar and asks for a pint of Guinness. The barman nodded and said, That'll be one euro, please. Somewhat taken aback, O'Leary replied, That's very cheap. Handed over his euro. Well, we try to stay ahead of the competition, said the barman, and we serve free pints every Wednesday evening from six until eight. We have the cheapest beer in Ireland. That is remarkable value, Michael O'Leary comments. I see you don't seem to have a glass, said the barman. So you'll probably need one of ours. That'll be three euro, please. O'Leary scowled but paid up. He took his drink and walked towards the seat. Ah, <laughs> said the barman. You want to sit down, eh? That'll be an extra two euro. You could have pre-booked your seat. It would have only cost you one euro. I think you may be too big for the seat, sir. Can I ask you to sit in this frame, sir? Let me measure you. I'm sorry. Uh, that's a terrible frame. Nobody would fit in there. I'm afraid you can't fit in the frame. You have to pay an extra surcharge of four dollars for being too large for your seat, sir. O- O'Leary paid up. 
I see that you've brought your laptop with you, added the barman, and since that wasn't pre-booked either, that'll be another three euro. O'Leary was so annoyed that he walked back to the bar, slammed his drink on the counter and yelled, This is ridiculous. I want to speak to the manager. Ah, I see you want to use the counter. That'll be two euros, please. O'Leary's <laughs> face was red with rage. Do you know who I am? Of course I do, Mr O'Leary. I've had enough. What sort of hotel hell is this? I come in for a quiet drink and you treat me like this. I insist on speaking to the manager. Here is his email address. Or if you wish, you can contact him between 9 and 9.10 a.m. every morning, Monday to Tuesday, at this free telephone number. Calls are free until they are answered. Then there's a talking charge of 10 cents per second. I never use this bar again. OK, sir, but remember, we're the only hotel in Ireland selling pints for one euro. A particularly alleged lie is selected for analysis. It is postulated that a coal man story was supposedly filched from another source. The other source is on the line and is understandably confused at the anger. I will give you Tampa, Florida, mm-hmm. July 3rd, 1993. Mm-hmm. Walking down the street. I spies across the street my coal man, who's a Mr. McGlinchey who is still trading under that name. I shouted, Two bags of coal of air slack! and disappeared into a doorway, but observed him, his head snap around. I did not communicate with him or approach him, but as the years went on, I met him again. I said, Do you remember in Tampa one day, a man screamed at two bags of coal and a bag of slack? That was me. And he said, Do you it? That's you see, I you see. Um, see, well, your story about no, being on the cable car at the bottom of Premier's is irrelevant. No, it's you not see, because this world is a it tiny takes place. A lar- no, no, I, I take a lard to have a good memory. Mature student. I want Mr. McGlinchey, the coal man, to ring up. And right, say to mature Mr. student. Mature yes, student. Ahead, Do you notice how he's covered himself there? Oh, Do you I, notice how how he's right? So he. Said, I am challenging Mr. McGlinchey, right. the coal man, to ring up and verify this. I would say that that happened to Mr. McGlinchey. All right. And I would say that Mr. Anderson has heard that story from someone who shouted to McGlinchey because he says, I hid into the, in the doorway and Mr. McGlinchey didn't know who called. So it could be anyone. Ah, uh, you see, As you're getting I, your second wind now. I did it. I called to Mr. McGlinchey. The mature student called to Mr. McGlinchey. Mr. McGlinchey didn't see the person who called. Has this mature student got nothing better to do on the run-up of <laughs> Christmas are, than stand here and call me a liar? It's because you're encouraging these people. Get away. Get off. I Happy Christmas. Get away. What about my Robson's kitchen? Did I get 20% off? You get off nothing. Like buy your own tiles. I hope they fall. I hope they crack. I hope your grouting goes stupid. Hans Christian Anderson meet Jerry and, Anderson. Hans Christmas Christian Anderson. Anderson, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> inchworm, inchworm. Oh, who was an ugly duckling with feathers all fluffy and brown? Get out of town. Get out. Get out. Get out of town. And he went with a waggle and a wiggle and a walk. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing. Get off this phone. There are people wanting to ring up. Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow. Oh, S.G. Mary, gentlemen, what I have to say.